Good evening, you're watching Profit Audio. My name is Julian, and in today's episode, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make from scratch some different sounds for different engines. So, whether it's for like, let's say, like a spacecraft motor, you're trying to make it sound like it's actually there moving around, whether you want to recreate a car or even a plane, I'm gonna show you how it's done using serum, you know, simple techniques that you can do for any projects that you want to work on and if you want to just get more creative and actually have more control of uh, the sounds this is the tutorial for you my friends all right so let's start up with um, our first sound i call this the star wars engine um, this reminds me of uh, in the first star wars now this is pod racing almost like those alien -y f1 spacecraft this is how it sounds So you get the vibe. It's it's pretty it's pretty alieny. It kind of sounds like it's building up as well. The second sound is gonna be a car sound. So this one you actually have to manually move this LFO around. So let's hear it. So this one's a bit simple, but uh, pretty effective if you want to get the speed uh, ranging. Our last sound is the, the plane one, so just check it out. It really does sound like you're inside a plane or something. So um, here we are. Those three sounds, this is what we're going to be making today. Let's start up with sound number one, the Star Wars motor engine. All right, this is what it looks like. I'm using two waves. Uh, the first one is this, this um, Ah Yeeha wave that I got off this sound pack and in it, it has those vocal waveforms and I just took the one that's right here. I'll be putting a link in the description with uh, this wavetable that you guys can download for yourselves. But um, otherwise I have a sine wave. So all right, just you guys just got to get this wave, put this wave here. And what's happening is that the first LFO is affecting all those parameters. So this is the wavetable position. So as we can see here, this is the wave and we're just scrolling through the starting and end point here using this LFO. So it's going over four bars, boom, boom. This is, this is the range that it's applied to. Same for the sync. The sync, I don't know if you can see that. It's instances of the same wave added one after the other. So here, this LFO is just going to go whoop, whoop, and it's almost going to stretch it around. The second uh, waveform, the sine wave, we're moving it in a way that's almost just like banning it. Um, this is because, as we can see here, um, this sine wave has different instances of itself that range from the perfect sine wave to a more bent sine wave. Uh, so again, we're playing with this to give it some, some more life and the sync window position here as we can see it's a bit like the first sync adding versions of itself is actually you know uh, squishing it as well and um, see how it's going like this compared to this being like this the sync window is almost giving it a different shape i put a filter on it so i just cut some of those high ends but the, the important thing with the LFO is that it's it's just going to allow all this movement to be applied together. That's how we get that type of sound going on. You know, there's this sort of effect being applied to it. Uh, I feel like the unison is very important as well because this gives a lot more depth to the sounds if we just had both on one. You know, we don't get the same feeling having the unison. It's adding this chorus um, effect 
to those waves and this sound. If we look at the effects I applied to it, I just added some distortion, um, a phaser. Uh, let's hear it without the phaser. So it's giving more details on the high end of the sound by uh, adding like an extra layer. I put some reverb on it and I cut off the, some of the low ends. Our second sound is the car motor. So when we just hear it, there's no motion. What's happening here is we're using this I can has kick from the digital waves to basically apply its shape to this sine wave. So we're using the FM from B so that we use B to modulate A. That's how I got that grindy motor vibe going. There's literally just the low end is cut, but what's happening is that this first LFO is applied to the pitch value of this sound. So when we move this up or down, we're actually moving the pitch value. But by manually moving this around, you have more control over the sound you're trying to get, whether it's a motorbike or a car. Here it is. So you could be merging this with different sounds or having it by itself. It's up to you guys, but this is a pretty cool trick for you to use. I've also cut some of the high frequencies. Otherwise, as you can hear, it breaks your ears. There's a lot of uh, high end there. So, you know, make sure you use a filter to cut some of those. All right, so our last noise, here it is, the plane engine. And I have set the unison to 10 to give it more fluctuation. And I've also set the wavetable position to, you know, a point that I liked for the sound I'm trying to get. First LFO is only doing cycles here, whereas LFO number three is doing a different movement within the cutoff again, and that's it. We, we get all this effect from the unison being up and this wave basically just... just moving around it by itself. If we take out the filter... we can hear that this movement is actually being done by itself. For the effects, all I did was cut off some of the low end and boost the highs and I also widened it up to uh, get it sounding a bit more stereo. The unison, it works really well because it adds all those fluctuations around, around your ears. So um, I reckon you guys should try it out. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe and I'll catch you guys next week with more videos.